As the controversy surrounding 2023 presidency continues, we will have the support of the Afeni Ferry and Bishop Matthew Kuka asked to resign over his utterances in his Christmas message. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome to Plus Politics. The national spokesperson, as in the spokesperson of the Afeni Ferry, said the group will endorse anybody that will allow restructuring of Nigeria. He declared that the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, is not the leader of the Yoruba race and that the Afeni Ferry has not endorsed him. The Ekiti State Governor, Kaya Defayemi, or any non-Yoruba aspirant for the 2023 presidency, he further stated that the serving overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church in Lagos, Pastor Tunde Bakari, is also part of the names being mentioned. And while reacting to Bakari's comments on Tinubu, Odumaki said those who have the cathedral right to express views on the pulpit should be careful of what they say. Joining us to discuss this, we have uh, uh, Comrade Mark Adebayo, who is a public affairs analyst. I also understand that Dikpo Olayoko will be joining us uh, anytime soon. Good evening, Mr. Mark Adebayo. Yeah, good evening, Coyote. Yeah, good to have you. Quite a time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's Not look at... Um, these issues for a lot of political watchers, for a lot of political uh, uh, keen uh, people who have so much interest in politics, this comment seems quite confusing. Looking at the relationship that have existed among these uh, uh, personnel, so to say, what do you think is playing out? Are some people playing some kind of uh, you know chess on us? I mean, chess on us now. Oh, well, uh, you see, it's a little bit um, complex, actually. It's a little bit complex. It's not, it's not so much confusing, but complex. The, the thing is that um, what, uh, on the issue of uh, Tunde Bakari, Pastor Tunde Bakari, whom I respect so much, uh, if you look at that statement critically, I do not see how that statement or uh, Pastor Bakari's intervention, how in, it in any way, you know, uh, launders the image of uh, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu in any positive light. What that statement did was to confirm all the silent rumors about his origin, about his education, about his, uh, you know, probity profile, about his transparency. So uh, I, I do not see that as a good publicity for Senator Bola Metinogu. Secondly, on the, the position of Afeni Ferry, the issue here that is very clear, the critical issue here is that Senator Bola Metinogu has not aligned himself with the political aspirations of the Yoruba nation. For instance, in the area of restructuring, he's not there. In the area of Amotekun, it's only in Lagos State that we don't have Amotekun in the, in the Southwest, perhaps uh, Muste too. But it's very clear that in Lagos State, it was the governor emeritus, Bola Metinubu, that suppressed the inauguration establishment and operation of Amotekun in Lagos State. So, to that extent, Shibola uh, Metinubu is seen in many core Yoruba circles as not representative of the Yoruba political aspiration in the area of restructuring, in the area of uh, self-determination, 
in the area of uh, reconstituting the current military uh, constitution of 1999. So uh, the Yoruba position seems not to have the support of Senator Bola Ahmed Dinobu. And to that extent, many Yoruba core leaders see Shim Chinubu as not uh, ha that he has a trust issue, political, politically speaking, in Yoruba land, that he has a trust issue, that, that many people believe that he would rather want to serve the political interest of the full and not rather than protect the fundamental political interest of the Yoruba nation. Okay, and that is Mark. where the contradiction comes in. Comrade Mark, let, 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 let me try and uh, jump in here so that uh, we also put other issues into this conversation. Uh, now, I understand that there is a bit of uh, confusion. Okay, maybe I should avoid the word confusion. Some bit of uh, differences in this interpretation that when you talk about the Yoruba leaders, you're probably talking about some principal kind of leaders but when it comes to who directs political support base, who commands where to vote and where not to vote, it's not usually about the Afeni Ferry. And people will remind us of some of the endorsement they've done in the past, and a large number of the Southwest people did not follow their instruction. Is that the case here? Uh, well, is it, um, whether people followed substantially the instruction of... Uh, Afeni Ferry or the political orientation or direction of Afeni Ferry at any point in time of election, it is uh, it's neither here nor there. It, 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 it is sufficient, it suffices that Afeni Ferry represents the fundamental political, social, and economic, and economic interest of the Yoruba nation. That is, that is sufficient, you know, they, they may not. Uh, I, I, as you have uh, said, probably uh, people do not follow what you have said, but if in a free and fair election, in a free and fair credible election, the Yoruba nation will follow substantially what Afeni Ferry uh, will, tell, will tell the Yoruba people. In a free and fair election, where you don't use intimidation, you don't use the power of incumbency. Look, Afeni Ferry has credibility that many political actors in the Yoruba nation do not have. Afeni Ferry that has that credibility, has that, I mean, you cannot take it away from Afeni Ferry that it is a group that stands for the good political interest of the Yoruba nation, as against the selfish political aspirations of some politicians. That is where Afeni Ferry stands out. Okay. That is where Comrade Afeni Ferry Mark. stands out. Comrade Mark, like, I, yeah. like you said, I totally agree with you that the interest might be noble, the interest might be germane, might be all the good adjectives you want to talk about. But uh, can we look at numbers? Can we look at what really translates to being, uh, uh, you use the word in a free and fair. Maybe we two of us should quickly go back to history, to contemporary history. You remember what happened in 2011 when the, the, the table turned and it is alleged that the likes of Senator Tinubu was able to change the, the direction and you saw Jonathan winning the Southwest. In 2015, when they formed the merger, the story changed. Buari was able to enjoy the support of the Southwest. And likewise, 2019 was quite, you know, quite competitive. So are we looking at a very strong force in the person of Tinubu? What does he have that he still carries so much influence that probably Afeni Ferry is yet to put up? Well, the, the, that's something you cannot take away from Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu. That's something you cannot take away from me, and that is uh, political strategy. He is a deeply informed, experienced, you know, competent political strategist. That is something you cannot take away from him. I mean, you cannot take that away from him. You may have other issues with him, but you cannot take that away from him. But you see, there's no basis for comparison between Bola Ahmed Tinubu as an individual, as a political machinery, uh, uh, with uh, Afeni Ferry as a group that focuses on Yoruba interest. Uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is an individual, is a politician, and he's seen 
mostly in Yoruba land as someone who is ready to mortgage the general interest of the Yoruba nation for selfish political interests. And that is why there's a divergence of point. Now, Afeniferi is not a political party. Majority of people there are not politicians. So it is not about the context of votes that we are talking about. It is a, con it is a context of historicity about the fundamental interests, political interests, present and future of the Yoruba nation. That is what Afeniferi stands for. So it is not about, uh, we should not reduce that to the level of context of, of political offices in an election. Okay. So these are two dramatically different uh, persuasions. Okay. The perspectives are different. Okay, let's, uh, let's also look uh, at... Abdullah Ahmed Tubu is a politician of, of uh, incredible, incredible strategic competence. You know, so okay. what he is seen in some Yoruba circles as someone who does not buy into the general fundamental interest of the Yoruba nation. Afen Ifere represent 100% Yoruba interest. And okay. that is, we should not bring, we, can, we should not reduce the intrinsic value of Afen Ifere to the level of the polls. It is not a political party. Okay. These are a group of people who are committed to a cause. Chivon Ahmed Turumbu is a politician who is after power, who is after influence, and you cannot, you can, he, has the funda, he has the fundamental constitutional right to do that. Okay. My position is that uh, Afeni Ferre's endorsement of any individual, which has not been done, will only tell us the thinking of the Yoruba nation in terms of the political direction of, uh, of Nigeria. Okay, so, comrade, comrade, I, I don't want you to explore all the points you have for us, but I, I'm coming back to you. We understand that uh, we are being joined by Dipo Olayoku, who is an editor, and I also like to also refer to him as a politician since he belongs to a political party. But I won't mention the name of your party. Good evening, Mr. Dipo Olayoko. Uh, good evening. Yeah, let's quickly bring you into the conversation. Now, uh, this discussion, we understand that uh, you initially thought it's going to be much later, but sorry, uh, we have to bring it forward. Uh, let's quickly have your comment on the latest from Afeni Ferry that saying that they have not endorsed any candidates, and uh, for as far as they are concerned, any candidate that believes in restructuring, we have their support. How strong is this statement? You know what led to that. This was kind of a banter between a very, very spokesperson, Yinka Odumaki, and uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari. Let's have your take on this whole issue. Well, thank you very much, uh, Karade. A uh, compliment of the season to our viewers. Yeah. On, on the other hand, we say same to you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I find it very it, uh, uh, fundamental right to endorse or not to endorse any political any person. Uh, don't forget that uh, since 1999, when we started this current dispensation, they have always thrown their weight behind some candidates. In 1999, they threw their candidate support behind the, all the AD candidates. But unfortunately, by 2003, it's like uh, something happened within the fold and that the center could not hold. And we all know the history and what really eventually happened, how Afeniferi, sorry, Afeniferi, the newer group, uh, emerged from Afeniferi and stuff like that. Now, going back to the current, the current uh, issue, that is Afeniferi not supporting any candidate for 2023, uh, I don't know which one we should believe because some months back, Afeniferi alongside with uh, um, Ohaneze, uh, Pandev, and all these uh, ethnic groups said that anything short of having an equal presidency in 2023 is not acceptable to them. So I don't understand the issue of we're not supporting any candidate now. I don't know where that one is coming from. Uh, on the issue, I know the particular on the issue of uh, Chief Polacha Ahmed Chinumbu. Uh, if you look at the political trajectory since 2003, uh, Afeniferi has not been supporting Tinobu or Tinobu's candidates. That one is not a secret. So it would not be a surprise if by 2023 Afeniferi does not support Tinobu. But as to the person they are going to support, it is their right. They have the right to support anybody. But I think maybe as the program progresses, we look at the political relevance of Afeniferi 
in the modern day politics of the Southwest region, where they claim to be representing your by interest. Okay, uh, I as far as 2023 is concerned, it is their right. I, because I in 2019, you, I, I promise you, Dick Paul, that I will take you up on that. But let me go back to uh, Mark Adebayo. Now, something important that has been raised. Let's look at um, the idea of we we'll only support anyone who supports restructuring. Do you see any change of plan? If Tinubu, for example, says that I believe strongly in restructuring, this is my belief about restructuring. Do you see Afeni Ferry, you know, saying that we have by endorse you? Uh, well, um, if uh, suddenly uh, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu says that uh, not just that he believes in restructuring, but that he will execute it, I think there will be a change of mind, there will be a change of heart in Yoruba land generally, not just Afeni Ferry. Uh, but uh, you know, at times, you know, I, I, I try to avoid even discussing the presidential uh, ambition of uh, Senator Bola until he declares that he's interested in the presidency. Of course, we know that we are hearing the voice of, uh, uh, of Jacob and the hand of Iso, many of these things that are happening. And uh, eventually, you know, when politicians say they are not doing anything, eventually you see they, they are doing it. When they say they are not doing, when they say they are doing, you see that they are not doing it. So, but if it comes out to say it will do restructuring, you know, I, I, and I, which I doubt very much. I doubt it very much because he will not want to anger his northern political associates, and that is where there's an issue between uh, Senator Paul Ahmed Tinubu and and the African very and many Yoruba activists, because if he begins to talk about restructuring. Uh, the, the North will, be, will, be, will become comfortable with him. Already you will know that he is having issues within the APC, of which is a fundamental part of the uh, establishing authority of that party. There, 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 there are issues within the party, as vis-a-vis -vis Senator Abel Tinubu, we are hearing that his instructions within the party are being weakened. Many of his... Uh, many of his... Uh, Supporters have been weakened within the party structures. So he will not want to say something that will further compromise his position within the party. I okay. do not, but if it comes out to say, look, I'm contesting for the presidency and I believe in restructuring and I will execute it as president, I'm sure it will be the best bet for the old Yoruba nation okay. to support him. Okay, interesting. Uh, let me uh, talk to you, Dikpo. Uh, talking about the political relevance of Afeni Ferry. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of these uh, public office holders, which uh, Adebayo has done some kind of justice to it, explaining to us that the way a politician reason is different from what uh, a, a, a social cultural group like Afeni Ferry also stands for, that they are both different. Putting that into perspective, and secondly, what is the need for the Yoruba uh, group to really push for this restructuring? I, I, people can easily come to terms with the South-South. When they talk about restructuring, they have so much in terms of uh, oil and they want to control these resources. Why is the Yoruba really keen on restructuring? Yes, um, Karade, if you look at the way Nigeria is... Uh, oh, can you please speak today? up so that we can hear you better? Yes, I say, can you, can you hear me now? Uh, you can just... You know. Okay. I say if you look at the way the Nigerian, the Nigerian nation is configured now, there is a need for whatever name you give to it, either restructuring, re-engineering, the alignment, and stuff like that. We were, give, we were on a program very in the morning today, and then an issue cropped up, the issue of a papa gridlock. And they said the Lagos State government has decided to take it upon itself to solve the problem. And we said that is the spirit, because this program problem has lingered on for the past five years or six years. And we expect somebody in Abuja to come and solve the problem for us. That is why the problem has remained intractable. So that's exactly what we are talking about. If restructuring is the issue, I don't think uh, there's anybody more qualified when you're talking about restructuring that actually well I met in Numbu, because this has been the same song since when during the AD days. But you know, in politics, uh, what is there for is, what, some of us outside cannot see what is there in government. But the issue is, Will you have mentioned something about the political relevance? 
And that is why I said something that in 1999, all the governors that emerged on the platform of AD in all across the Southwest, were, they, they, were, they used the platform of Apani Ferry. But unfortunately, by 2003, when Chivaba Femi Olo had second term ambition, he was able to decimate the Afeni Ferry to the extent that of all the governors of Afeni Ferry, it was only Bola Ahmed Chinumbu that survived that onslaught. And since then, Afeni Ferry seemed to have lost the political relevance. How do I mean? Look at the election they have held in the Southwest. Unfortunately, the candidates that Afeni Ferry has supported has always been candidate that for the affordable, what I mentioned, Chinubu did not support. And interestingly, they have all lost out. You know the case of um, Dekede in, uh, in Odo State. We know the case of uh, Leka, former deputy governor of Ayoshe in Oyo State, in the equity state. Even as recent as 2019, 2019, they supported Atiku because they felt, even, they, they, yes, because at the time when they talk about defending the political Yoruba interest, then you look at, you have your son, who was contesting on the platform of a political party. But instead, you decided to cast your lot with somebody, a political party that has nothing to do with your rubbers. The presidential candidate is from the north. The vice presidential candidate is from the east. All the leaders of the political party were not Yoruba. None of them is Yoruba. So now in 2023, even 2020, you know the last state election, we don't know what happened. They didn't support the APC candidates. So the issue of political relevance is always there. Okay. There's the need for them to go and reject their name. Okay. So uh, that an sorry, average urban uh, person. Don't worry, we still have more time. Let me, let me just quickly get uh, uh, Adebayo's uh, in, uh, comment on that. Now, what Dikbo has succeeded doing is to tell us that Afeni Ferry has some kind of bias for PDP rather than APC. So is it okay to just say that it is not a political group or it is a political group or a social cultural group that has a lot of political interest? Yeah, the latter description of uh, Afeni Ferry would, uh, is something that uh, I will buy into. The social uh, cultural group with political interest. So it's not, it's not strictly a political party. And uh, you know, like I did say, you know, uh, Afeni Ferry is not a political party. It doesn't contest elections. It doesn't go to the polls. It can only, you know, advise on what should be done at the, at the polls. But it's not, it doesn't field the candidates. And, you know, and, um, you know, if you are, if my, in response to what my colleague there said, if, uh, if, if you have a son who you know is not going to protect the interest of the family, why support that son? Why support that son? You cannot support a son that does not, that has shown that he's not going to support the, the collective interest of a whole race. And that is where the, 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 the issues between Afeni Ferry and uh, Shibola Medhidubu has always been coming in. You know, that is, the, that, is the, that is the issue. Now, by the time he was the last man standing, you will discover that he was only able to save himself within Lagos State. The influence did not go beyond Lagos State. And even now in Lagos State, you begin to question the, uh, the, the, the credibility of that political relevance of himself as a person, because uh, uh, judging by what happened during the NSAS uh, movement, you know, which was hijacked by hoodlums and the rest of that, who, who tried to uh, blackmail a legitimate noble cause of the Nigerian youth. So I, I, I don't think that we should dwell too much on the com uh, comparative analysis of Afeni Ferry and uh, uh, Shibola Ahmed Jinubu as, as an individual. Comrade, they, they, have, comrade, they have different comrade, foresight. Comrade, they have di comrade let, me, let me stay with you before I go back to Deep Bob. Can you please mention those issues you think APC is not serving the interests of the Southwest and why, you know, Afeni Ferry is not putting their support for their candidates. That, 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 those are the areas I want you to clear. Give us some clear oh. examples of things that is not serving the interest and hence they endorse the candidate from other party. For instance, number one thing is the issue of resourcing. You know, Senator Bola Metinubu and APC do not believe in resourcing the country. They have always moved against it. And uh, the, the kind of resourcing they are looking for is ephemera, 
is myopic, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, deep enough. You know, even the true ordinary true federalism to run on the basis of the 1999 military constitution, they are unable to effectuate that, and that is a major issue. The issue of resource running, the issue of self determination, that I've been very believes in that some of us believe in. Um, uh, Senator Paul Ahmed Jinubu does not believe in that, so that is something. That, that is the major. That is the major point of divergence in okay. this issue. The issue of restructuring the country, the issue of self determination, the issue of true federalism. The issue of true federalism. These are things that Senator Paul Ahmed Jinubu believed in the past, but since 2015, his body language, his focal language, his political leaning, all of these have turned against the issue of restructuring in this country. And if we don't restructure Nigeria, Nigeria is unsustainable on the basis of the current okay. moribund platform that we have now. Okay, that Dipo. is the major issue. That is the major point okay, of let's, the Let's have Dipo's take on some of the issues you raised. Uh, Dipo, uh, do you see this as something to take home, to look at the fact that uh, 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 um, APC is anti-restructuring because we've seen the uh, Governor El Rufai-led committee saying that, uh, and that's the Governor El Rufai committee saying that uh, they are for restructuring and they also want uh, powers being devolved to federating units and some other issues. <laughs> what do you think? Yes. Is uh, it just uh, a lip service? Some of us are students of political history. It is, I know, is it not an irony that uh, somebody will believe that a PDP that was in political power for 16 years that didn't say anything about restructuring will now wake up suddenly to now carry out structuring and they are casting their lot with them. Is it not an irony that an Abubaka Atiku Atiku Abubaka, who was a vice president for eight years, and there was never a time they toyed with the idea of restructuring, all of a sudden have become the friends of people who talking about restructuring in 2019. You see, uh, some, like I said, some of us are students of history, political history especially. The issue between Bola Chinungu and the Afeni Ferry people is more than the issue of restructuring. We know what happened. Uh, Kayode, I don't know. We are not, we, I don't know this in politics. We have been covering politics even before 1999. We know what happened in 2020, the 2023, the, uh, um, the Mama Buckner story, the story of uh, Papa Abraham Adesanya that eventually left to the Apenny Ferry and AD, our the Bola Chinook working with. Like I said, it is their political right to support whatever candidate they support. But I think there's the need for them to reassess their political linear. Because, for example, he said Bola Chinook doesn't have any relevance again, especially immediately after the answer. It is a pity that Abraham Chinook has become the main issue in political, in political talk in Nigeria, just like IBB described about Ulawa when Ulawa died, that was the main issue of our political talk. Hmm. Is it not ironic that the same Tinubu whose party just won a senatorial election on December 5th is now going to refer to as somebody who has no political relevance? We are the PDP candidate came a distant second. I, I think, uh, like I said, the issue between Afeni Ferre and uh, Tupala Tinubu is beyond restructuring. It is far deeper than what people know. We, some of us, know the issue. It is ego. And I think if they are talking about the interests of a river land, uh, it, they have always shown to me that they don't have much interest in the interest of the urban nation. That is the way I see okay. it. But it, like I said, it is their right. You are sorry, that is what democracy preaches. You can support any candidate of your choice. That is why they said it okay. is your choice. Nobody is grudging them. Ayoko, I'm, I'm, I'm being told that for them my to time do. is up. I, I would have to actually end the conversation here. Uh, Mark Adebayo, I'm sure you have so much to tell us. But trust me, mm. we found your number and we'll keep in touch with you regularly on some of this conversation. This Thank you so debate much for is having me. On, on, on ending, and we will continue our conversation on all our social media platforms. Let the conversation continue there. Thank you once again. Mark Adebayo, Public Affairs Analyst. I always like to call you Comrade Mark Adebayo. Let the Aluta continue. And uh, Dick Polayoku, thank you. thank you so much. I will take a short break now, and when we return, Muslim rights concern Murik advises Bishop Matthew Kuka on the way forward. We'll be right back after the short break.